we've tried to make it uh, as engaging and interactive as possible uh, in a forum like this. But the amount of, uh, the amount of work, the amount of uh, first to the market practices, products, innovations that have happened in camps, and not just in a core business, but across our businesses, I think it's just been phenomenal. Uh, we've spoken about some of these. Uh, we put them on a website. There is a fair amount of PR that we do. But I don't think we've ever put it together in a showcase opportunity like this. And uh, while we were planning the analyst day for the last uh, maybe two or three months, it was certainly a focus area and endeavor uh, to bring all of that together. I'm going to call each of the leaders and uh, perhaps give you a quick commentary on that, on each one of them. So Hassan, uh, would you like to step forward? Hassan is our chief officer. My only attempt was that we talk about leadership. Most of them, of course, some of them have been in this company uh, 10 or 15 or 20 years, Varda and Kamla and Prabhu specifically. A lot of them have stepped in recently. The three founders that you see, Kaushik, Amit, and Surya, all joined the group in the last 15 months. But I can tell you that I've worked in very large companies in India, some of the largest, <coughs> most iconic names, especially MNC names in the area of uh, IT services and products, and never had a team which had such diverse capability. And you will realize some of this as each one of them then steps up. Do I call it three plus one? There are three trajectories, okay, and one opportunity, which we can immediately spot. Trajectory number one is the orange line, okay, the India growth in terms of in the mutual fund space growing at 15% year on year on year. Okay, that is the trajectory number one, keeping us on very solid grounds. And trajectory number two, translating this 15% into AUMs. Okay, we are talking about uh, an AUM growth of 6x every 10 years. It was a lakh crore in 20, 2002, 6 lakh crore in 2012, 36 lakh crores in 2022, and still counting. We are at uh, 40 trillion is the number that you see on this graph, but the latest numbers that we have for the industry overall is 46 trillion, 46 lakh crores as we speak today. So a great news for the Indian MF industry, okay, with this excellent trajectory number two. Third trajectory, closer to heart, okay, the company that we work for, CAMS, okay, the trajectory of CAMS market share, currently at 69%, okay, we started in the 50s, and we have grown slowly, rapidly, and getting there. Again, one more recent update, under the hood, we have crossed 70%, we will talk about it. So three trajectories, I said it's a three plus one slide, okay. The one part, okay, where there is a big opportunity is the underpenetrated market in India. When we talk about an AUM of 40 or 46 trillion, we are talking about 500 billion US, okay, is the current AUM of the Indian MF industry. If you look at the global number, it's close to 70,000 billion. So that's the opportunity that we are talking about. And the 100 lakh crores, okay, is the number that is being projected as the AUM based on the current trends by the end of this decade. And as CAMS, okay, we are ready to get there. These 17 large and fast growing AMCs are being serviced by us, our customers, we are truly, truly proud of. And it includes, in India, four out of the top five AMCs are CAMS customers. Nine out of the top 15 are CAMS customers. And translating to 69% in terms of market share, and I spoke about the 46 trillion of the MF industry in India. We handle, we service 31.7 trillion out of the 46. Okay, this is the CAMS number, okay, that we are talking about. 17 with Navi being a new addition. And at the end of it, I'll also talk about the remaining four additions. We are responsible for 2.7 crore PANs, investors. We are responsible for 8.2 crore folios. We are responsible for 3.8 crore live SAP accounts. Okay, on a day-to-day -day basis, this is the kind of responsibility that we are carrying, and this is the kind of growth, okay, that we are seeing, and we have been able to successfully handle this. And if you still look at one more layer, if you peel, we are talking about five crore transactions per day that we handle. Every, every day in camps, we handle five crores of transactions in our systems, and if you look at, okay, five crores, how many of these go wrong? 0.002%, okay, of the transactions. Only these 
percentage, the third decimal, okay, are going wrong. So this is beyond Six Sigma in terms of quality that we carry. So this translates, okay, to a CSAT of more than 96%. Okay, our customers and new customers, okay, I spoke about the 17 whom we are servicing now, whom we are powering, the new customers, okay, who have signed up with us, okay, if we take the last six AMC mandates, there is heavy competition, okay, as always, but these four, all these marquee customers, Zeroda, Angel One, Helios, Taurus Oro, have all signed up for camps now, okay, and all these are going to start in the next few months, the next few quarters, okay, again, with camps, and I'm sure they are also poised to win and take the industry to the next bank, right, for example, the entire core banking system is built by some of the IT providers like, like a TCS or Infosys, you have Pinnacle and you have banks product and stuff like that. For mutual fund, the entire liability side processing is done by us, built on our core platform, completely developed in-house. While we have built the backend, right, in a very unique way, we have also innovated to build the front end on top of it and be first to market with a variety of things. Again, I will keep giving the example of banks because if TCS is building the back end, the CBS, they are not at the front end. It's not their applications you are, you are interacting with. But in case of CAMS, it's uniquely different because we have built the back end, so we know what the processing is going to be. But at the same time, look at my CAMS. The number one and the largest portal or app for mutual funds in the country. GoCorp, the first institution focused direct investing platform for institutions which at one point 22% of the industry transactions in liquid was coming through this platform. Edge 360, the largest distributor platform in this country. But when we were talking about large numbers, we talked about uh, 500 million transactions processed, we talked about uh, 2 billion API hits. But how are we doing that at scale? And we talked about, uh, you know, the industry growing at the rate that hasn't spoke about. All of that volume, and we have seen utilization. We are seeing that the new money is coming through SIPs, which means a lot of volume of transactions coming into the ecosystem or coming into MF industry. How are we processing it? So behind all of that is massive automation efforts that is driving our ability to process these transactions. And we spoke about uh, where are we today, and I was also talking about where are we getting, how are we getting ready for tomorrow. Based on what you heard, okay, you would have seen that uh, it is not just for powering today, okay, with 2x the capacities and the kinds of capabilities that we have built and we are running, okay, we are also ready for the next, say, 30 trillion assets and the 100 million customers in mutual funds. This is what is keeping us uh, ready and uh, we are ready to, for the 100 lakh crore by the end of this decade, okay, like many of you in this room looking forward to it, we are also keenly looking forward okay, to winning and also helping our customers win in the marketplace together. Thank you. This is what we had. Yeah. What is alternatives? We, when we call alternatives, we call about AIF and PMS, alternate investment funds and PMS. Uh, as you know, this is for the top end of the spectrum, high net worth individuals. The minimum investment size in an AIF is 1 crore, and for PMS is 50 lakhs. Yeah. So how has this industry grown? It's grown really fast. It's grown at a 30% CAGR in the last three years. If you take a five-year period at a 38% CAGR, how is this going to go uh, going forward? Crystal Research last year, they said from 2022 at a five-year period, it should grow at 27 to 29 percentage. Our estimated, it should be at least upwards of 20 percentage, maybe not 29, but at least 22, 23 kind of percentage is what I believe the industry will grow. And so why are we excited? This means people will outsource. Uh, regulations have picked up. This graph over here shows the pace at which regulations have picked up over the years. So it's, it's grown exponentially, rightfully so. As the product becomes more retail, more broad-based, the regulator will start looking at it more closely. The amount of disclosures will be high. The amount of uh, uh, compliances that you will have to stick to will be higher. And people need help. Earlier, that was not how it was. To start in 2008 with one client, which was Milestone Capital, 
uh, we had four employees sitting out of one of the uh, small locations in Chennai. Today, uh, the AU, AUS, as we call it, is in excess of a lakh 80,000 crores. Uh, most of it drawn down, so it's not the commitments. While it's commitment, uh, more than a lakh 50,000 of it is actually deployed capital. More than a lakh folios, uh, 160 AMCs or asset managers as our clientele. Uh, across them, 400 plus schemes. And this is pure outsourcing. We don't kind of do small bit piece, only stamp duty payment, only DMAT, etc. We kind of take the full scope of work uh, because that's where the value is. So 160 full scope service uh, RT and fund accounting kind of services uh, clients, uh, 400 plus schemes. We are now in three locations. Uh, we are, um, while we have traditionally been in Chennai, we have now scaled up in Gift City as well as Bombay, uh, in Belapur where we have our call center operations, and uh, 260 plus employees across these locations. We are today the largest uh, service provider for the domestic segment, and we believe we have more than 50% share of the outsource market in terms of who outsource, and we are sure this is going to grow. Which is where, I mean, like at Fintable, we transitioned to a digital transformation partner, focusing on the alternate side to begin with, right? Uh, you know, the eventual idea is to grow into a digital platform for the entire ecosystem, capital markets ecosystem. Ready? Uh, we think we should grow faster than the MFPs. That's my internal target. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, so the, it, it's been promising. I'm sure you saw that we have shown faster than 20% uh, uh, growth in the last year and a uh, few quarters. This year has been very good. I mean, uh, it's promising 50 mandates already within five, six months of the year. Well, sir, we have crossed 100. And with uh, whatever we have invested in technology with This is the selection for CampsPay. We have chosen to be a unique niche player. We are not a general purpose payment uh, platform in the market. So we have we serve the ecosystem, which is capital markets, insurance, and NBFC predominantly. There's another additional selection that we have in the form of uh, you know, OTT and education sector. And uh, the, the, the play that we see is we want to operate in the non-vulnerable segments. Um, there are enough, you know, there are hundreds of categories of merchants that we can onboard. Since we, we operate in the BFS segment, we power a lot of financial services institutions and everything else, we are sticking to that. Um, if you know the flavor of how mutual fund ecosystem operates today, a lot of SAPs get uh, you know, registered and then transaction gets triggered. That's essentially where we started up. Those days, there are only ACH as a single line of payment method was dominantly used by the ecosystem. Then came about uh, net banking, but today we have gone beyond all of those things. For us, for our camps pay, the real focus is going to be on UPA, UPA auto pay. Um, what do we want to be? We want to be a one-stop uh, payments uh, shop. We are already in that journey of making that as reality for us. We want to be a preferred player in the segment that we identified also, which I mentioned. The two ways we are looking at, one is recurring payments. We want to continue to be a dominant player in that. I'm very happy to say with with all the ACH transactions happening with the NPC ecosystem, we could be among the largest aggregators. Okay, again, this is a selection that we have within the mutual funds, insurance, and um, NBFC ecosystem. And also, all the digital payments that you're looking at, while mutual funds don't support credit card, but every other payment method can be supported. So you're pretty much uh, available in all the spaces. Until a few years ago, um, like I mentioned, we were only a uh, recurring payments processor. Today we are in other segments as well, especially the digital way of uh, doing and delivering service in the payments uh, domain. Of what uh, we have been doing and what's our thought process of looking at insurance as an opportunity. Last year, the regulator actually made one change uh, in the regulations, which is to do with KYC. General insurance industry was bought under the KYC regulation, which is almost made sure that the market for insurance repositories overnight uh, became almost, I would say, 30 times of what it was. Thanks. So that's step number one. Step number two, over the last five years, what we have seen, in fact, last three years post COVID, Within the private sector life insurance uh, new issuances of policies, the share has actually doubled from 27% to 50%. We believe that we are sitting today 
And if we have the right solution, we can actually go and capture this market. In here. This is the 16 crore base that we are talking about, which is the combination of general insurance companies, issuance, only private sector general insurance companies, issuance on this side every year, which is about uh, 15 odd crores, and a one crore number that we are talking about, which is to do with the private life insurance companies' policies that get issued every year. So new business, which we are talking about. This is the 16 crore market that we can actually go ahead and cater to today if we have the right solution. This 10 crore transaction base, if actually enabled on a platform, gives you a unique ability to service the customer, reduce cost for the industry, and actually create convenience for the end policy holder. The capability of industry solutioning capability comes into play. And I think this is the industry first that we are trying to create here a single portal for the customer where you as a policy holder don't have to go anywhere and get the entire policy servicing done in one platform. That's once they come on to that, we believe that just the syndication benefit, which is all insurance activity happening in one place, can go ahead and reduce the cost to the insurer straight away. On the left side that we believe if we are able to do that, we can actually present integrated values uh, integrated benefits to the insurer, uh, to the policyholder that have not been thought about so far. This is a this is a working title for us right now. Just represents what our value proposition is. Uh, in there, we are aligned with the policyholder's interest. We want to make sure that through this platform, the policyholder is actually able to get maximum benefit from from their insurance portfolio. We are not interested in selling anything to him, which is a central tenet of value from here, because we have done the survey, we have spoken to customers, we understand the single reason that they don't trust distributors and insurers is because all information that is being shared actually used to sell. Only The only way you can have the trust of the customer is if you are actually representing them on servicing rather than representing them on sales. We work on the customer's consent, no data shared without customer's consent. And we give equal footing to all insurers because our job is to make sure that the policyholder gets the best deal. We are not here to sell anything. Therefore, there is no uh, kind of you know, partial sharing or any kind of data which can go to any insurer. It's protected. It's for the customer to do that. So uh, we spoke about uh, payments, insurance, mutual funds. But this one business that we are very, very excited about at CAMPS because the scale it can encompass is across industries. It is about the entire financial health of a user across all the financial sectors in this country. And that is very exciting. So, you know, powering financial inclusion for a billion Indians and what we are doing in the account aggregator business. This is the market opportunity. We have spoken about why you want to share data and what all data you are, it is possible for you to share through account aggregator. But what has CAMS FinServe does in this space till now? We're going to first talk about who is trusting us. Which are the institutions who are trusting us to service them with this framework, right? And you see the who's who in the wealth management sectors. So you have a Mutlal Oswal, you have a Geojit, you have a Scriptbox, a Kotak Cherry. And you also have the guys like End Money and Mool and Techfino and all, both a so mix of both traditional companies, fintechs, trusting us to make sure that we are the service providers in their account aggregator ecosystem. Similarly, in stockbroking, we have the Centrums, the Angels, the ISEC, Samco, and Deserves. The entire group of CAMS uh, service mutual funds have chosen us, of course, for sharing mutual funds data to the account aggregator system and using CAMS for the FIU, which is the service use cases, where how to nudge their users to, uh, you know, to buy more mutual funds. Similarly, so this is just again, we have NBFCs, we have Mahindra Finance, we have Shiram, uh, Muthu, SMC, Bajaj FinServe, all the large names and insurance we have, again, SBI, Edelweiss. Today, uh, through CAMS FinServe, the industry is seeing close to uh, 35, 36 lakh pulls a month, which is data pulls a month. CAMS is doing close to 5 lakh data pulls a month. So we are today at around 12% market share in this industry. And this, you can see the growth chart, and that growth chart is just taking off. 
or is just starting to take off. Uh, we are seeing, if you look at the MOM growth numbers for the last eight months, uh, uh, the growth number over last June, these are very, very large numbers. Of course, it's from a small base, but the numbers are very large, which shows the kind of traction not only FinServe is getting, but also this industry is getting. We have kind of touched 17 percent market share on a one day basis, depending on how many pulls are happening. And uh, yeah, we, we, we won some awards as well. The happen in case of lending, it can case of PFM. All of that is why we are very, very excited about it. And that's why this slide we are calling the dream, which is what we believe can happen, which is around a million pulls a day is what we think this industry will see by the year 2028. And this will ride on these kind of use cases, which is FNO onboarding, bank account verification, loan, insurance, personal finance. So we believe that it's, it's very early, very nascent numbers, but the speed with which it is growing, the opportunity that is there, the retailization that's happening, it's a market for us to take, and we strongly believe that we will be able to take it. Thank you. Rest of uh, what we do. So think, uh, you know, one of the things we kind of bear with a lot of pride is that we have been winning awards uh, for the type of work we do for, and uh, for the type of use cases that we are bringing to the industry. Uh, we are the only Indian company in the AI FinTech 100 list of this year. Uh, it's a list compiled across the globe. Through the body of work that we do, we've been trying to make sure that we cover the broader spectrum of, and, and you'll see the lending uh, examples kind of pop up a lot more often. Uh, so we work with very large uh, banks, NBFCs, uh, some of the largest fintechs. Uh, we have over the last nine, 10 years, probably the list of clients that we worked with goes up to 120 plus. Um, and as a joke, some 30 plus of them would not even exist because that's a decay rate of fintechs uh, in terms of the number of companies that you work with. But at the same time, one of the reasons that we'll come to very quickly, the choice of lending as the primary focus that we chose is because a common thing that is said very often these days is that almost all fin businesses end up with lending because that's the fastest and surest way to make money. What are we working on, right? What are we? So like I said, there are two big things that we are very excited about. One is we believe that through the partnership, we get to extend what we believe are, are, are broad full stack AI capabilities into the capital market ecosystem. The second that we believe is that we want to bring in what CAMS does to the broader lending other markets. There is an industry expansion, there's a capabilities expansion that we're working on. So you probably see the, uh, so in a way, CAMS, FinServe, Finduit, Amaze, all of it is working together to deliver what we believe will be a game-changing experience for the account aggregator ecosystem across industries. That we believe is a huge opportunity which will keep playing out for the next 12 to 15 years at a breakneck speed. Uh, we have seen it in the case of trade bureaus. They took about seven years to hit a level of maturity. And our broader belief is that A will hit that cycle in three and a half to four years because the quality of data, the way it is coming is very, very different. Uh, we are already working on a whole bunch of data products as we call them, uh, which make decision making uh, faster, more efficient and exciting. We are. Uh, extending the quick ID capabilities to bring in a new generation. Today the virtual RM model is more about you know somebody calling, sitting in the office and having access to your information. How about co-browsing? How about letting your customers and your RM kind of interact in a real time environment where they are all co-browsing the same information, they are looking at it the same way, they are taking decisions together where they are kind of able to collaborate. Can we get to that point similar to how customer onboarding and other processes in banking are moving. When you think about a digital banking unit, that's what banks are trying to do. Why not extend those capabilities? Um, and lastly, uh, we are launching what we are calling a centralized on-demand AI capabilities uh, uh, service desk because we believe that building AI capabilities is, is, is not necessarily inexpensive. Uh, and not everyone, every organization has the mental and tactical bandwidth to pursue these uh, goals. So somewhere having access to the domain depth that CAMS brings to the table, the tech depth that hopefully we bring to the table, combining it all and making it available to you like an on-demand service, that's another thing that we're working on. And there's a whole bunch of things in the cooking oven somewhere. 
And as they keep coming out, we'll have probably a lot more exciting stuff because this is one space that is here to stay. Um, so we as you often say very, very corny. When you think AI, think 360 AI. So first of all, a big thanks to all the analysts, the fund managers, the investors, both present and prospective, I hope, who kind of took time off, as Hassan said, in this inclement weather and came here. Thank you so much. Uh, as you know that we have been listed for almost three years now. So in the course of this time, Anuj and me and Anish have met uh, most of you, if not all of you. But what we tried to do today was something different. Uh, we wanted to give you un go under the hood, so to say, and give you a glimpse of the various businesses that we have invested in, what market we are targeting, and where we are currently in our journey, and uh, also to present the high-quality team in front of you, are the people who are going to deliver. We hope it, it did create some impression in you. There are many such events that we will do to reiterate this message going forward. 